Well, good afternoon and welcome to our very first At Home with Brickworks and Architects webinar series. Um, my name is Eve Castle. I'm the National Business Development Manager for Brickworks Building Products. Um, and it's our great pleasure to have you join us this afternoon. Uh, you will definitely know um, my colleagues, uh, your state business development managers around the country. Uh, and um, uh, we look forward to um, sharing this content with you on a regular basis. Um, like you, we are working remotely and we've been looking for creative and virtual ways that we can continue the great work that we get to do together. And so this series is one idea that we've had um, for doing that um, to provide inspiration and continuing social connection while we're spending more time at home. Uh, you may have also recently received invitations from our team on our CPD events. Uh, these have been really well uh, subscribed to and that tells us that this content is useful to you at this time. Uh, so we will continue to uh, host the virtual CPD events um, on a monthly basis. Uh, I'm going to just share uh, the national contacts within the team uh, because the CPDs are something that you can reach out to us via email or phone if we can sort of hook you up if you haven't been able to um, get along to any of the sessions so far. So in Queensland, we have uh, myself and my colleague Tom Howarth uh, in New South Wales, we have Nathan Blackwell and Sarah Langbridge. In Victoria, we have Nick Thexton and Matthew Hale. In Tasmania, we have Beck Lauer. In South Australia, we have Natasha. And over in WA, we have Darlene. And so our team is um, ready to assist, obviously, with these CPD presentations. Uh, but also, uh, we are very well set up for no contact sample delivery uh, and we're here to assist in any way we can um, during these different times that we're operating in. It may even just be for a phone call at this point. We're happy to be in touch. Just want to ask you also to keep an eye out for an invitation to subscribe to a new podcast series that we're currently producing. Um, it's being created right now uh, with our good friend and collaborator, Tim Ross. Uh, Tim is working on a series, um, having conversations with architects that are couples, obviously um, architects that work together um, and live together have been dealing with the work from home dynamic for some time successfully. And so we think that's some content that will be um, of interest, um, a little bit fun and certainly another way to break up the work from home week. Finally, we've been grateful to continue working with you on some exciting projects over the last um, weeks and uh, we hope that continues. Uh, we are very grateful for your ongoing support and I'm very pleased to say that our factories around Australia are continuing to remain operational and we're ready to supply. So we will get through this unusual time together. Um, but now uh, a special thanks to our guests for the presentation this afternoon uh, from Turner Studio. And I am going to now hand over to my colleague, Nathan Blackwell, uh, New South Wales Business Development Manager, to give a personal uh, introduction to both Dan and Stephen. Please enjoy. Afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, so uh, Dan and Stephen are obviously uh, directors at Turner, um, who have uh, firms both in uh, predominantly Sydney, but also now in London. Um, Dan and Stephen worked together for many years, actually started um, working together at Candelapis in the 90s um, and share a love for design, innovation, opportunism and resourcefulness. Uh, they are regularly stimulated by robust critiques of each other's projects, but also fond of collaborating together and with their teams. Um, Stephen uh, has been with Turner just on uh, well, almost 10 years, um, I think a director since about 2016. Um, has three degrees, in uh, one in architecture, one is a Master of Arts and an interesting one, which I'd love to know more about later, Stephen, on theology. Um, interest for Stephen is, if you, if you see his Instagram page, probably no different to most other architects, full of amazing buildings, but also uh, a lot of traveling and skiing and has a, a passion for gin. So if you're ever in need of some good advice on gin, I know Stephen is the man for that. Uh, it's worked on all sorts of areas in, in transport, sport, hospitality, health, research, industrial, modern, uh, sorry, multi-res, 
um, has also a keen interest in some environmental issues and is always looking to see how they can use products um, that are perhaps wastage or seconds products in, in projects. Um, Dan Zwa is from Melbourne originally. He's been with Turner for 18 years. Uh, Dan studied at Deakin Uni um, and also Ball State Uni in the US where he did a year and a half uh, to finish off his degree. Uh, has worked in a lot of social housing, seniors, uh, Aboriginal housing and mixed use uh, type projects. Um, Dan has an interest in cycling, which I can relate to. And uh, probably won't like me saying, but also MX5 Club. So he's a bit of a rev head there and uh, loves racing around the track. Um, so that's basically the, the guys there. I'll, I'll throw to, uh, I think Stephen is starting. Um, so hope you enjoy and uh, thank you very much, guys. Hello, and well, thank you for joining us. I'm going to uh, just switch over to the presentation here. So um, uh, be merciful, it's the first time. Uh, but uh, Turner, as, um, as Nathan just introduced, Turner's about 110 people and uh, working on all sorts of projects from joinery to big urban master plans. Um, and uh, we thought a good way to understand Turner is to um, look at some of our what we call foundation projects. And I'll just run through some here. This one is called Number One Lachlan. It's an inner city residential project. And I think um, in these foundation projects, there's a number of themes that we revisit and return to in our work. And this one in particular is borrowing from the uh, public domain to actually create something special for the residents. So uh, an important bit with these projecting cantilevering open spaces that give a very dramatic um, uh, extra feature to the building. Um, another project, an early project, is the Silkwood project, uh, also in the city, um, in a very warehouse context. Uh, in this one, we're interested in really developing uh, a lively, engaging response to the urban, uh, the public domain at ground level. And so we fiddled around with using the concrete that we had to have and putting signage in it and really trying to deliver something a bit more and a little bit of architectural humour here with a, a glass column holding up the side of the building, which we also stuck some signage onto. Uh, George and Allen was a project that had a, a very sort of warehouse beginning. It was originally supposed to be called uh, the, the warehouse, um, but uh, we ended up with the street names. Um, and this is one of the projects where we did use a waste product. This is a, a, a part of the barrel blue uh, brick process that um, was a wastage product, but we managed to use it in a ever expressive way on this building and became sort of the, the sort of theme element. Um, and we looked at trying to keep the finishes really raw, like warehouses uh, might be, um, and uh, corbelling and doing all sorts of things to the brick to give the expression to the facade. Uh, a different sort of project, more suburban project, is the Union Bow Main project. And this has an important relationship in establishing a sort of terrace style architecture in, a, in, a, uh, in Balmain, which is a more sensitive um, suburban area. And the feature here is really the dormer windows that you can see on the right. Uh, and bringing something that of more of a domestic scale into a larger building um, uh, to sort of create something interesting from the inside, but also um, play around with the scale of the building. Um, so now we're coming to the site and uh, it's an interesting site and the two projects are sort of next to each other in this, in this area. They both came about um, through client based competitions rather than sort of open competitions, which was really interesting. Uh, one's a private residential project and the other is an affordable rental project. There's also a uh, social housing project just south on the site here as well. So it's an interesting precinct bringing together all different housing modes and them sharing the same public domain and civic areas. So originally it was all public housing and now it's become this integrated model. The site sits between Glebe and Ultimo. Uh, so Ultimo is a site characterised by warehouse, larger warehouse um, buildings, where Glebe is uh, much more finer grain with terrace, um, uh, terrace buildings sort of predominating in that area. Uh, so we saw the difference between really robust forms and fine grain forms. And so the, the two projects we're about to go through now both sort of respond to this uh, interesting intersection of two different types of, of things happening on the site. As we walk around the context, um, 
there were a lot of things we thought were really interesting and, and themes that we could bring into the building. The, the arches that we saw in the, the uh, light rail, uh, now the light rail viaduct, and the windows in the heritage buildings, and also some very expressive brickwork that, we, that was in the existing public housing in Glebe. Uh, across the other side of the road, we'd get to, to Ultimo, and you have a very different architecture, the grand scale of the warehouses and really interesting features of the brickwork that where the uh, designers have used the material itself to give the expression to the building because ultimately they're very pragmatic buildings uh, as you can see on on the left where they wanted a window they just put a window uh, so the west end project um, that sits in the northwest corner of the site and uh, uh, so quite close to Wentworth Park that you can see on the top of the page. And the, the new fish market is just off the uh, top of the, the screen. Um, this was an early sketch. This didn't win the competition, but sort of explains what we're trying to do with the building. So it has a, a base architecture, which is really expressive and tries to deal with the fine grain and, the, and, the, um, and looking at the public domain. And then a body of the building where we see uh, a lot of the brickwork, a crown, and then the distinctive arches that really live in this um, central part of the building and a landscape layer as well that sort of knits everything together and uh, softens the form and also gives really interesting areas uh, for residents to go out and enjoy the city. So here you can see a, a, a sort of the hero shot of the building and you start to see those elements coming together. The, the base, which is quite playful and, and you know, goes around through all sorts of different sorts of arch types and a, a more, um, a more composed mid part with the arches and then uh, the, the crown of the building with the penthouses at the top. The brickwork was a really important part of the building and we looked to um, corbel and, uh, and sort of stripe it and do everything we could to really get that play of light and shade and show all the things that brickwork would, could do. Very similar to the warehouses picking up things that that using the, the actual fabric of the building to, to do the expression rather than applying different things to it. Uh, and you can see here in the, the, the form of the building, the windows being paired together a bit like the warehouses and the different um, brick corbeling types. Uh, the corners were a really interesting part of the building and they actually are a response to a, a more pragmatic issue. So the site when, when delivered to us has these, uh, these chamfers on the corners and they really work at the ground level to help people not bump into each other as they go around corners. Um, so above ground level, they're of, of more limited use and produce um, sort of indifferent architecture. So we thought we could uh, borrow these areas uh, when we got above the ground plane and put balconies in there. So the, these distinctive corners of the building really solve a couple of problems. They solve this um, uh, sort of poor architectural result of the chamfer and also give us a bit more envelope to uh, sort of open up the building and, and, and provide a bit more area for balconies and other things. Uh, this is a typical uh, form of the building. So it's really a courtyard building and with, um, with the two main elements at the north and the south, the top and bottom of the page. Around the building, there's a series of entries, each of each core. And we thought it was important to really distinguish these entries as different on the facade. So we used an asymmetrical arch um, to add something quite different to what we saw. So it was really clear where the entry positions were. Uh, and uh, it was an interesting job for the bricklayers, but I think they, they um, dealt with the problem really well. And then we've extended the brick architecture into the lobbies as much as possible, picked up a brick um, herringbone pattern in, in the paving uh, and really, really trying to push the expressive qualities of brick as far as we could. Um, there's numerous landscapes in the building. This one uh, is just showing the ground level landscape, which is more of a muse um, courtyard. Uh, and uh, we do circulate the traffic through this, uh, through this courtyard to actually solve a bit of a servicing issue. Uh, and it worked work well on that. We can offset that by uh, having a number of these upper level gardens, um, both public and private, the larger ones being, being the communal public spaces. And then there's some special, very high level uh, penthouse gardens that are accessed through a, a, a quite sort of dangerous feeling um, spiral stair to get to the top. Um, the views across the city were, were surprisingly good. It's a really interesting uh, sort of grain of the city that you see at this level. Um, so you're just above the, the height of other buildings around the, the precinct. Um, and, 
that, so this is a, a picture looking at the lower level courtyard and um, we like the idea of these arches and looking through the site. So from one side to the other, you can see right through the site. So this is the area where the traffic sort of circulates on the left and it's a more quiet um, public space, uh, communal space on the right. The signage was an important part of this, this building as it is on, on all our buildings. Um, so that the graphics team really worked hard to get a signage system that worked with the, co the concept and sort of spoke to the, the form that we were, um, we were, we were producing. And then the um, interiors, they're fairly, they are, you know, they're, they're nicely done. Sara and Design helped us with the interiors and they really pick up the idea of the natural unfinished materials. The upper level apartments with the arches were, were a real surprise and they really frame the views out to the context in a, in a, in a lovely way. And we have these great um, sort of city balconies uh, and we've, uh, we pull the light in above where we can as well. It helps us a bit with our solar access requirements for New South Wales uh, multi-west. Um, anyway, that's, that's the Cowper Street project. So Dan's gonna now grab the screen and we're gonna move to the Black Wattle Apartments. Thanks, Stephen. Um, and hopefully I can make this as seamless as um, possible in terms of um, transition. Um, it, it's really interesting. We've got uh, two projects right next to each other. And um, in terms of how we approach them, they, they shared the same concept, which uh, made sense. And, and in terms of Stephen, and myself, we, we do share a, a robust series of discussions when we go through projects and we're not shy to, um, to give honest um, feedback. So it was bit really interesting. What's different about this project um, is our client is City West Housing and they, they held a competition um, at the start of the, the project. This was probably one of the, um, before we even got the project, um, we had to put together a two week really quick exercise and a concept about how we'd approach the site. And um, it was really good working with them because they have, um, they're really uh, dedicated and they, they have a lot of passion for delivering affordable housing for, for key workers. And that really comes across um, from Lisa's team and, um, and we took that on board. And we really approached this project as, um, as an apartment building that we would love to live in as well. And so that, that approach um, with, with our team and uh, I have to put a big thanks to, to Mel and her team, including um, Tiffany, who, who delivered the project, and, and Adrian, in terms of um, putting it together. So we took on board the warehouse um, concept, and this is one of the early concept um, diagrams we did with the, with the competition. So really looking at the ground plane, having the, the, the architecture in terms of the, the, uh, the main body, which is more a warehouse, but as I go through the design, I'll talk about how we use bricks in terms of massing, but also in terms of screening. And then the kind of more sawtooth and um, the pop-up roof elements, which start to respond to the more the, the warehouse um, sawtooth, which is there to allow more natural light. So obviously ADG is keen, keen on that. And, um, and so we use that as a, as a device, both pragmatically, but also in terms of the expression of the building. So uh, if we look at this elevation, this is um, Bay Street and um, Bay Street's quite different to the other, the other um, streets. So we've got um, Wentworth, which is shared between the two projects. And um, what's interesting about um, Bay Street, it's really about the warehouse. It's kind of a, a, a bold face kind of um, approach to architecture. And so for us, it was how do we get a really flat facade to get a lot of depth to it? So we use brickwork in both um, the, the expression in terms of rhythm of the, of the building, but also as a screen to balconies. Um, and on the top, looking at that kind of sawtooth element and the, the pop-up two-story apartments. Uh, at ground level, we um, have a, a retail um, shop front, which was, which was a mixed use. And, and I suppose um, with, with um, Glebe and this area, it's a little bit hard in terms of the anchor of, of Bay Street and, and Broadway being more retail. So City West Housing have actually decided to take this space up as part of their own and, um, and use it. There's a couple of things that we, we really like to include is obviously a bit of history around the, the site and, and the story about where it, where it comes from. So Black Wattle is a reference to, um, to the original Black Wattle Bay. And um, part of that was um, the shoreline was actually really close to um, Wentworth Street. So that's all been subsumed over time. And where the park is, it was actually um, all mangroves through there. So we like to have that story and, and integrate that with the part of the building. Um, the client brief was really interesting. They want they hold on to the housing um, and so the, it's basically um, providing affordable housing 
and they want to make sure it's a, as low cost as possible. It doesn't mean that it's cheap, it's just that it's more affordable to, to manage in terms of long term. So we really like the idea of having a, a street frontage that um, adopted the, the Glebe High Street of um, the tiles, but we used um, actual brickwork, which is more robust in a, in a vertical stack, uh, stretcher bond pattern. And I'll get my brick terminology right as we go around the building, because there's a lot of different um, brick types that we used. When we went to the corner, um, and, and I suppose this is a reflection of um, time spent uh, working with Angela, it's more looking at how we uh, celebrate the corner, but more in terms of um, making it, I mean, maybe I've got the terminology wrong and Angela, I'm sure will correct me, but looking at how we create an anti-corner, but we used it as a device, one, to, to look at how we can change the expression of the building as it goes to the more finer grain um, glebe part of the, the site, but also as a um, more functional element about um, natural light and, and cross ventilation. So Wentworth Street is quite different in terms of its language. Um, still using the, the strong horizontal um, elements that you find in warehouse buildings. We use the brickwork more as a screen element. And, um, and then as we progress that further, it's looking at some of the detailing. So I think this is um, an aerial shot, one of the um, studios Sydney now requires you to put together so you can see how closely you documented the building, which is pretty scary. Um, but at the same time, it gives you a good um, idea of how we compose the building. And when you start to look at some of the detailing, um, we really pushed the two materials we had, the primary ones, in terms of the brickwork and the concrete, to look at how far we can push concrete in terms of square edge detailing, um, the, the recesses, and also in terms of brickwork, in terms of the stretcher bond, how we can use it as a screen rather than a solid element, which were some lessons learned along the way in terms of how to, to get um, structure and support in there. The, whilst it's a warehouse building, it's kind of really robust, we did um, start to introduce a, a personalization to each balcony. So the colors for balconies change. And at, at street level, when we start looking at the entries, um, that warehouse graphics um, continues through in terms of how we look at the signage. So I suppose the legacy of working on um, Silkwood and having that form there, which was fairly robust, working with what we've got um, in terms of needing concrete, we, we work with the same, same approach here and, um, and looked at how we put that together and I suppose we're not really worried too much about um, how fine grain this detail is in terms of class one or class two. I think it's a robust material, it has character and it's fine for it to be, have a few chips. I think some clients get really nervous and even the builders want to patch like crazy this stuff so it's really hard to hold them back but you've got to find that guy on site who's got the bucket of grout who wants to patch it and um, give him a new job to do because we don't want him to patch too much. In terms of the, um, the foyers, we continue that robust approach inside. So this was um, taken, I think, on the day that they were cleaning the floor. So it's pretty shiny, but it's just bluestone home finish. The brickwork is um, a vertical stretcher bond. And um, some of the signage elements that you find in warehouses in terms of the line marking and, and um, orientation to different parts of the, the warehouse we've carried through. But also looking at how we get the letterboxes to have a similar character in terms of the balconies and the coloration continuing through there. At one stage, um, we had each mailbox a different color. And I think I probably drove um, Mel and Tiffany um, crazy in terms of trying to figure out which one's which. But we um, resorted for a more refined um, color palette. Um, so it wasn't each individual apartment having its own uh, mailbox color. Uh, just a quick um, the view of the ground floor, just to give that um, the context. So really activated ground plane, each entry being similar in terms of its character, you know, quite um, tall in terms of its, um, its space, is four and a half metres for the ground floor. All the servicing occurs off Wentworth Street as well, so it's really getting a integrated frontage through there, um, with the three site link um, joining Stirling and Elgar Street at, at a higher level. Um, the, the other aspect we looked at was um, how we use materials. So it's, I mean, I think as architects, we, we tend to follow this um, some more, more consciously of others, but in terms of looking at uneven spending, um, we looked at um, using materials that were quite tactile in terms of um, to touch, in terms of using brass, which apparently was cheaper than um, using stainless steel. And it's probably if one finding a good uh, uh, subcontractor. And so as architects doing that research, I think really pays off um, to get a, a product that you're happy with. 
and um, and also responds to the budget. So I, I really like the, um, that approach when we do, as architects, do that research and um, we can get a better outcome than the ubiquitous stainless steel approach. So all the ground level stuff is in brass and, and the apartments inside, we, we vary. So this is looking at the corner. Um, Stephen took the corner approach a little, little bit differently to us. And so we looked at a more um, finer grain um, response and, and and it's probably steeped in history um, doing these type of corners. But um, we really like the idea of borrowing from the, um, the public domain to create that, um, that dialogue. And, um, and also sharing a corner with Stephen. It's, it's quite rare that um, as two architects working together for a long time, you get two projects across the road and you share the same idea, but have different outcomes. So it was, it was quite good working with, um, with Stephen and his team and, um, and also with my team as well. So um, the, the other key part, and you can see in the image on the, the, the top left is um, uh, looking at how we extend the communal space. It's a really small site. Um, and the idea to, to get more out of the site um, for the residents was a, a key driver. So once again, it's probably, you know, affordable housing um, is not meant to be cheap, but um, I think for us, it's where we can add value uh, in terms of the design and, and amenity. So that was a really key, key approach. So although it's a small space, we do have a lawn area. We've got a, uh, a, a cantilevered deck that gets great views across the city. Um, we've got uh, a garden and um, in terms of connection to other residents, that's really good in terms of these balconies, which um, we had to stick out and cantilever out uh, a good two and a half, three meters um, because we couldn't get the area within the form. So that kind of play about how you get a, um, make a problem into a, a really interesting design solution was, was great. And um, the idea of creating clouds as well. So this awning structure we reference as a cloud because I always find these awnings on top of buildings, they tend to be quite heavy once the engineer gets their hands on it. So we looked at creating that kind of cloud structure um, over the barbecue area and it's got its herb garden and the like. So I think that was a lot of fun putting it together. And, um, and I think this shot, although it shows all the ugly stuff on roofs that you never get to see unless you look at Google Maps, um, it starts to show how um, compact the site is. And um, for us, how hard we've got that rooftop area to, to work. And at, um, at the lower level between the house, the, the building to the south, which is um, senior social housing, which was done by, by another firm, We've got our three site link, which is more a passive space. And that's accessed by L the, the two side streets. So once again, using brass, uh, using um, concrete um, precast steps. And we started to integrate some of the, um, the history of the site and the surrounding area into that as well as part of that journey. Um, we also like to put some of the, um, the um, our, our team, um, that's Rosie from office and um, one of the guys from site was there from pretty much the, the start to the end. And, um, and the other opportunity we like to take is um, getting back to the building is more uh, apartments. The, those three balconies at the top there start to borrow a view through the gap between the buildings and start to connect back to um, our adjacent site. So Stephen's site. So in terms of creating that dialogue and, and looking through, so kind of, I suppose, taking the best out of um, some of these really narrow spaces. The warehouse graphics continues through to the um, this more passive courtyard side. So we've got entries from the street and also the through site link or, or courtyard. And that warehouse signage um, continues through. And um, so each foyer uh, has their own um, address, which reflects um, of the, the street address to Wentworth. Uh, I just thought I might run through a couple of plans just to help explain the design. So the building's only like 18 meters deep in, in the majority of parts. And um, the apartments are primarily north facing, so get a really good um, uh, solar access and um, cross ventilation. So there's three cores. There's really a minimal number. It's like six or seven apartments of each, um, each core or lobby. And um, really like that to encourage a, a kind of a small community um, in, in terms of the building. And that's the, the rooftop terrace, which um, we tend to give our, our buildings uh, pet names. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, this one's got an uh, animal, so it's our our um, cartoon um, coyote, uh, which looks like it's been squashed, but um, it's, it's kind of a bit of fun that we have when we spend hours and hours on the project to look for these little um, cues. The typical floor um, above and below, um, or below really, is, is like this. So there's three foyers and um, the apartments are all um, based on, on, the, on the affordable model. So there's no en suites, it's one bathroom. 
And so one bedroom is exactly 50 square meters in terms of ADG. I think you can make a lot out of the 50 square meters. So I'll show you a couple of these in a minute. And um, the two beds are 70 and then 90 square meters for a, for a three bed. But it's ha how you use those spaces and I think um, how you start to um, define the living from the, the sleeping areas and, and how you make more, how you add value to those, um, those spaces. Um, another example of this approach to uneven spending was just using stencils for um, signage, which ties back to the, um, the concept, but also start to help us out with wayfinding and some of the back of house areas, which tend to um, be forgotten, but we had a lot of fun with those. And also when we get to the common um, foyers, uh, an, an approach we had to um, assist with maintenance was to have polished um, concrete floors and also integrate the wayfinding into the, um, the floor, similar to a warehouse. And these uh, are a place that, um, that the lift doors and they're pretty much entry mats that we, um, we, we have there. Um, the other aspects of um, design is that um, there's a lot of noise in terms of statutory signage. And um, I don't think we, we'll ever get it right. There's always things you've got to fix up on site. But one thing um, is that you don't need to put um, words everywhere. I think the pictograms um, can work just as well. And they, they start to set a really nice hierarchy in terms of what we see as being important signage and not important. And um, so the, these are just there to balance out the, the, um, the approach that we had for, for wayfinding. In terms of um, the apartments, uh, the colour palette was pretty um, um, refined or robust, and that gets down to the maintenance guys. It's, it's amazing how much say that they have. And one thing that came through really loud and clear at the beginning was that they like to have one tin of paint, and we convinced them to have two, which was um, a good step. And um, with the facade, changing the colour for each balcony was um, that kind of blew the mind a little bit. So we had to refine that a little bit, but we got our, we, I think we got a really good outcome at, at the end. And um, when we go to the apartments, we, we used um, black hardware instead of um, the brass just to set that apart. And when you enter the apartments, each one has um, uh, right at the entry storage and both in terms of cupboards, but also being a renter for many years myself, you, you know that um, you can't put hooks in the walls and you can't do this. So what we looked at was um, working with um, City West Housing to provide that at the onset in terms of um, the, I suppose, the, the amenity within the, the apartments. And that we looked at in terms of both, obviously, amenity, but also composition. And then uh, looking at how we create those extra spaces within the apartments. Uh, one thing. I really dislike is um, the um, glass sliding um, mirrored uh, cupboards to bedrooms. It drives me crazy. So what we looked at was um, putting just simple joinery in, but having open shelves. And I think um, being in, in a rental place, that idea or the ability to actually start to provide your own expression is um, really important. So we looked at um, having open shelves in, in bedrooms, in living areas, so that you can actually start to, to manage those yourself. Um, in bathrooms, um, not only did it save us time in documentation, but also um, the main driver being um, for the client is that we actually just used um, uh, the joinery and mirrors and things like that from um, a hardware or plumbing supply. So these are some Reese plumbing um, basins, which are cheaper and allowed us to spend money and time elsewhere. And um, for us, it was really looking at the composition of um, how we um, arrange a bathroom. So fairly functional spaces, but I think there's a lot of fun. And um, if you get the balance right, they, they, they work and can look um, fantastic. Um, within each apartment, there, there's obviously the need to keep the cost down for the owners. But um, the, the other aspect um, is in terms of the um, occupants. So also the apartments are great in terms of cross ventilation and solar. Um, we installed fans um, to all the bedrooms and, and living spaces. Um, there are there is a, a basement car park, but it's less than 40 cars, even when you include the um, the motorbikes. And the idea behind that is obviously keep the cost of the building down, but also um, to encourage um, uh, a modal shift in terms of people either ca uh, catching public transport or bike riding. So the basement is um, has got a lot of bikes in there or space for bikes. So um, Nathan would be happy, but that's also my um, passion as well. In terms of uh, the kitchens, and to really make the most of these um, apartments, which are uh, low in square meters, but big in terms of how we approach the space, 
was the composition and, and arrangement of some of the um, the the way we um, locate the fridge, which you can't see from the living area, and start to arrange the um, the joinery so it's open at the end. We looked at these are all laminex. It's you know 20 mil um, bench top. Um, the, the the sink is really cheap, probably a little bit too cheap, but um, the idea is that it's just um, top mounted. It's got a, a dish drainer on top there. So it's all really functional. And I think you can still make these things look good. Um, and we use Laminex in terms of some of the joinery, um, kind of that timber veneer, but we've hidden the fridge around the corner there together with the, the pantry um, and, and the microwave to just to hide those, those elements from the main um, living area. Um, we had a lot of fun in terms of how we started to arrange the the external parts of the building and their relationship in terms of, of balconies. And um, the contract was a, a lump sum. So it wasn't like the DNC contracts we, we normally work with, which um, we always try and take advantage of um, much, advantage of the situation as we can for good in terms of getting um, a better design outcome. So for us, it was how far can we push materials and finishes? How far can we push the design? Because we know that there's always um, the, the issue about coming in on budget, but I think there's also the awareness that you need to try really hard to get as much value add into these projects and um, with the right team on board, and this is coming from um, City West Housing and also Kane, you can get a fantastic outcome when, when everyone works together. So I'd say from the beginning to the end, it was, it was really good relationship. Sure, there's, it's touchy during construction, but um, I think the, um, the outcome in terms of an affordable housing project has been great. And um, this is one of the top floor apartments which has got the, um, the sawtooth roof element and the, the pop-up. So that, that language um, of the overall building is expressed through the individual apartments. And uh, when we get to the corner again, that, that idea of that connection back to the building and, and I suppose um, occupying a different part of the, um, the building is, is um, expressed in, in, in the balconies. And the idea that um, going back to the building expression, how, how can we make a flat building look um, have depth and also how do we actually start to extend the, the elements so that uh, there's, a, there's a fineness to them both in terms of the concrete but also um, in terms of um, the brickwork and some of the detailing through here. And, um, and as we look at uh, precast, looking at how we suspend these heavy elements above the ground so that they, um, they kind of change the, the original use in terms of um, being load bearing. And, um, and I thought I'd just take you back to the corner um, I suppose we call these the hero shots. Hopefully it is a hero shot, but um, that's, that kind of sums up um, the City West Housing Project, um, which is Black Bottle. And, um, and, uh, and hopefully it provides a really good dialogue between the two projects that were put together um, at the same time between Steve and, and myself and, and our respective teams. So um, thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks Dan and Stephen. Um, if there's any questions out there, if people want to put it in the in the Q and A section, there was a few questions that were answered um, through uh, along the way in regards to I think questions in regards to parking, which um, which were answered. Um, I guess on, on the parking side is uh, do either of the projects look at uh, using the ride share sort of things within their apartments? Um, I'm happy to answer that. The the ride share, there's a, there's a few spaces um, outside immediately on the site, so on Bay Street and Went West. So given that we're, I think we're actually half the rate of what the city of Sydney has, we're able to, um, to work with the city to, um, to use those spaces as part of our allocation. Because I think we've got our, our rate, like city of Sydney have a really um, refined um, parking rate, which I know they're, they're lowering as well, but even with the future lower rate, we're well below that. So. We've used the, the street parking there. So on Bay Street, there's two spots. And um, from memory on um, Elgo and Sterling, and I think even Wentworth, there's a, there's a couple of spots there as well. Uh, there's a question about the bricks, which, uh, which I think Stephen answered. Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to answer as well. I think we had an answer uh, yeah. for Cowper Street, but maybe not Dan's project. Sure, so um, we use the barrel blue. And um, we use two sizes because um, we use a standard 230, then we use the 300 from memory. And um, there was a little bit of resistance to use that in the beginning from the, the builder, um, but we put, it, we put it to them and they, um, in terms of the, the 
bricklayer, they actually adopted it because it meant less cutting on site. And um, so where the builder's sale is going to cost us more money because we put it in a little bit later than we finished the tender, um, they actually came back and they used it because it was, it was um, more efficient for them to put together. The other one is the, the white brick is the Chillingham white. And then we've got the burlesque range in terms of the um, glazed bricks that we use at street level. As a question. question that's come in regarding public transport. Is that nearby? How far away is that? Uh, let, let me answer that. The um, light rail is not too far away. Uh, it's, a, it's a very easy walk into the city from, from this um, a project and up the hill probably about 300 metres is Parramatta Road, Broadway. And so there's many, many buses that go along there. So it's well serviced. It's like a really convenient area to live. Fantastic. Any more questions from people? No, no one watching via the webinar is able to ask them themselves, but you can definitely type in the Q&A. Uh, here we go. We've got another one now. Wow, they're all flowing in now. Um, has there been good take up of the commercial spaces? So in terms of the, the three, um, well, Black Waddle, three Wentworth, um, so that's now occupied by, or will be occupied by City West Housing. So they're moving their headquarters, which is in Piedmont, to this building now, because I see it as a, a really good um, space to, to be in. And, um, and, uh, and I suppose with their operation, they're actually expanding and they can see that this has got a good customer interface. It's, it's more accessible in terms of location. And so the plan is for them to, to move in um, shortly. And so we've been involved with doing the, the fit out works with that. So Adrian from my office is um, looking after that one at the moment. There's a question here um, regarding how close you work with your bricklayers. Now I know maybe for some context, uh, 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 Nick Turner, um, was originally, I believe, a bricklayer, but so I don't know if that sort of helps with uh, with you guys or not. But do you want to sort of elaborate on that one? Well, I think that's an important point. Like these these projects um, are at the end of many experiments in brickwork, and I think there's both projects have had sort of an idea of what might be possible in the early design stages, and trying to enshrine some of those ideas in the um, in the de development application so that they can sit in the project and, and sort of work through to the next stage. Uh, and then I think uh, on Cowper Street, uh, Hutchison were a really willing participant in sort of exploring um, how we were going to do these, especially those corner arches and the numerous arches on the project. And so we worked with a facade engineer and uh, managed to make those details work well. Um, but I think trialing it in various parts and working out what doesn't cost a bomb when you do it, um, is important uh, to sort of push the brick agenda further. If I just add to that, um, Stephen, what we did on the site was, um, I think you got to really make sure you know who the bricklayer is. And, um, and we started off, uh, one, one key thing that we made sure we did with um, a lot of the important aspects of the project in terms of detailing was getting the prototypes done on site. So quite early on, we, um, for all the brick patterns, we got the guys um, to, to do a, um, a test wall. And that kind of ironed out some of the issues. It helped them sort out who the team was. Um, because I think there's some people who really like detailing, just like in architecture and, um, and in terms of bricklaying as well. So um, the team that was on board, um, they uh, were pretty much handpicked and um, encouraged to stay on the project by, by Kane. And um, they had a lot of pride in what they did. So they, they were really happy um, working on it. So the, the end results there. And um, so they were, were good to, to work with. Um, even, even on a day-to-day -day basis, so that, that was really, really helpful. We've got a question that's come in um, regarding the energy efficiency. It doesn't nominate which building, so we might get both of you to address that for your projects, if you can. Uh, the Cowper Street project, I'd say, is a, is a fairly typical market project. So we worked, worked in getting the passive design working well. Um, but ultimately, it's still relying on air conditioners and other things to sort of cope with the Sydney climate. Um, and that's really part of the expectations of the market in you know, a semi-premium apartment. Uh, but Dan will have a different story on it. Uh, yeah, thanks, Stephen. Um, our projects, um, 
a little bit different. Uh, City West Housing have got their own um, approach to um, how they look at sustainable design. So the first thing is um, in terms of the material selection, selection for the building. So making sure it's robust, that's um, long term, they don't need to um, paint it. Um, so the kind of self weathering materials. Uh, in terms of the base build, they, they look at it from, I suppose, the ground up. They, they don't want to have a lot of um, complex services. Um, so, I mean, ideally they'd have no parking, but the parking is really limited the, um, to minimize that. They're, the building's always under 25 meters in height. So in terms of, um, with the NCC that's relevant at the time, there's no um, requirement in terms of um, stair pressurization, all those other services that come with um, tall buildings. Um, in terms of the, the base lighting, there, there is a um, the intention to put uh, solar panels on the roof to, to work with that. And that's something that's, um, that's ongoing in terms of their overall strategy and, and cost, um, I suppose the cost effectiveness of doing that, uh, both short term and long term. Um, within the apartments, there's no dishwasher. Um, so in some ways it's more efficient, but apparently dishwashers are more efficient than hand washing. But, um, there's ways that they're looking at in reducing power. Um, and in terms of the bathrooms, we just have a bathroom, we don't have an ensuite. And all the um, fittings and fixtures uh, have got uh, the, the highest rating. So there's, there's a genuine concern about reducing um, energy use, but having it hand in hand with having an affordable and uh, project. And so the other one is um, in terms of the, the each apartment, there's no air conditioning. It has um, the majority are cross ventilated uh, with uh, ceiling fans. So in terms of um, rating systems, I, I think it's probably more that City West Housing have developed their own system and that's always being refined. That starts to respond to the initial costs, on, ongoing costs, um, and also the concern to make sure that the residents have a, a low cost um, building as well. So they've probably got their own rating system rather than having a, a green star. But I mean, it'll be really interesting to, to compare both, but I'd say it would, it would rate quite highly in terms of um, those systems, but um, it's well beyond basics. And I think City of Sydney encourages that as well. So whilst we aim for the kind of the bare um, 40 points, um, City of Sydney through the DA um, process encourages um, to go beyond that. So there's a lot of targets that we hit that were above um, those, those minimums. Um, so uh, in terms of both, I mean, both the projects are being completed in the last 12 months and obviously entered into, uh, my understanding, the, the um, uh, uh, Institute Awards as well as the Think Brick Awards. Um, but there's been a few questions around the, um, the overall construction costs um, and per square metre sort of rates. Uh, so Cowper Street is about 5,000 a square metre and I believe Blackwell is about 3,000 a square metre. Yeah, just, just north of three. Just north of three, yeah. Just a fraction, but, uh, and that includes all the um, site works and everything else. So. Um, it, it's amazing how much those additional things we put into market housing, like the additional ensuite, um, the deeper basements, um, air conditioning starts to really add up for the cost. Yeah, a bit of marble, you know, lots of the stuff. Yeah, yeah. So um, all the materials are pretty um, raw, both externally and internally. So like Laminex, getting um, the, the fixtures from Reese Plumbing, um, those type of things, um, I think, really help to keep the cost down. Um, and it's a shame that um, some of those, I suppose, uneven spending things that we look at for, for this project, um, there's a nervousness or reluctance to, to follow that for some of the market housing, given expectations for, for purchases. Stephen, we had a question on the, um, the brick arches, and I know those um, corner uh, arches particularly had a fairly unique um, support system. Can you share any detail around that? Uh, yes, there was um, a long process in those corner arches. There is a steel substructure in those arches. Uh, they're all full bricks. Um, so it's a, it's a brick system. Uh, and there's a, a series of shelf angles. But yeah, there was a, um, we'd done it before in a small project in Alexandria. Like looked at a long sort of um, corbelling, corbelling sort of leg on a building. And uh, we just thought we could do it on every corner. And so um, we started there, but the facade engineers sort of helped us through to make sure the whole thing would stand up and sort of look right. And there was some adjustment on site in one of the corners, as I recall, where the, 
how the bricks come together in the corner wasn't quite satisfactory in the first corner. And I think that was corrected later on, which is nice. Um, so there's, there's a few there. Um, there's one about the percentage of uh, affordable housing. So obviously, Dan, the one you were talking about is all affordable housing. It's, that's right. So that's 100% affordable housing. And um, it's really interesting. It's not um, driven by, um, well, it's, it's, a, it's, a really, it's driven by your income. And um, obviously, you need to uh, fit into the affordable housing bracket. But um, your, depending on your, your um, dependents, um, your, you may have a really, uh, your income won't determine whether you get a one bedroom, two bedroom or three bedroom. It's your dependent or your family structure that, that depends on that. So a three bedroom apartment may be cheaper than a one bedroom, depending on, on the income of that individual. And so there's an assessment criteria that City West Housing have because they're, they're part of the um, housing provider. So they're a tier one housing provider, which predominantly, they start off at, within the city of Sydney and work directly with the um, contribution scheme there. But now they're doing work in Green Square um, and the, with Lisa and her team, uh, they're, they're looking at more, um, you know, further sites and looking at how they can um, contribute more to the uh, housing stock in terms of affordability within Sydney. So they're, they're always really keen to um, come on board with a site really quickly, look at efficient ways of building, get a team on board and move through. Um, and it's really hard in terms of that, that planning process because it starts to slow down, but we always, we're always looking at um, quicker ways to get this project finished. It's not always successful, but um, there's, I mean, in terms of going back to percentages, there's always a keen interest to um, get the housing. There's a waiting list, I think, um, that, that comes with City West Housing, and they start to look at that and work out the next project in terms of apartment mix. That isn't always the standard City of Sydney um, way, but they look at the future demographics and how, they, um, how that evolves. Fantastic. Well, um, I think we'll, um, we might look to wind up there. I think on behalf of the Brickworks team and also our audience nationally, um, just would like to extend another very big thank you to Dan and Steve for being so generous with their time and the insights on these projects. We actually do have gifts for you both, but we didn't know whether to send them to your office or to your house. <laughs> so um, maybe you can let Nathan know and we'll get that yeah. sorted out. Thank you very much. Thank um, you. And obviously, if, you, if we didn't get to answer one of your questions, um, I'm sure if you get in touch with the BDM contact in your state, we'll be happy to get those answers back from um, Stephen and Dan for you. Um, so thank you all again for joining us and uh, keep an eye on your inbox for uh, the next invitation. And we'll look forward to joining you again soon. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.